Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I, right from the outset, just want to indicate um, that One Nation uh, will not be supporting this bill. Uh, we do propose a number of amendments uh, uh, that we believe that the House should consider, uh, but ultimately um, the bill is a regressive tax. It, that's what it proposes. It is entirely designed um, to hurt the mums and dads and young families across Sydney and indeed Illawarra and Central Coast and Hunter, uh, who will be paying an unfair tax uh, and undoubtedly the burden will be entirely borne by them. We all know how development works in this state. We all know that developers need to uh, find ways and means of financing these projects. They need to ultimately have approval from their banks and their financiers. And when in doing so, um, they need to add up the numbers, count the numbers, work out the costings, and they will make sure that the mums and dads and ultimately young families who are desperate to get into the housing market uh, and are desperate to see a supply of housing in New South Wales so that they actually can afford to enter the market, uh, those charges will be transferred on. And that is why ultimately One Nation is opposed to this bill. I have to say, I'm actually deeply disappointed to see that this was the first bill that the Minister for Planning proposed in to this parliament. I would have thought that there were far more pressing issues in planning that needed to be addressed. But it looks to me um, that it's not the Minister of Planning that might be controlling the levers in relation to this bill, but indeed the Treasurer. And I note his absence here this afternoon in the chamber. This is a couple of weeks ago we heard. Yep. A point of order has been taken. The Honourable Courtney Hussles. in the chamber that has previously ruled to be out of order. It is commonly accepted that members do have other duties and just by them not being necessarily in the chamber doesn't mean that they're not paying close attention yeah. to what is actually occurring yeah. in the chamber. Yes, thank you. Um, I don't think that the honourable member was deliberately uh, reflecting poorly on the treasurer, but I would say this to all honourable members, particularly those who are new. Uh, the Minister for Finance is quite correct. Um, it is a long-standing tradition in this place that there is no mention when other members aren't in the chamber uh, for Hansard because it could reflect on motive, which uh, is not appropriate. I, ac I accept that point of order and, and your decision on that, Mr President, and it wasn't to take light or suggest in any way or shape or form that the Treasurer doesn't have a deep interest in this legislation because, as I will um, uh, elucidate in the next uh, 10 to 15 minutes, I'll make it very clear that he has a very deep interest in this legislation and in making sure this legislation is passed. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we heard the Treasurer cry poor in this House and essentially say that he uh, uh, took on a, a Treasury account or a piggy bank that is effectively empty, and that is why he has to make some very tough decisions. And I listened intently to what the Treasurer did say in this chamber and, and, and publicly as well, as he said that he would have to make some very tough decisions in the coming months uh, in relation to uh, the... Uh, economic or bleak uh, economic outlook that New South Wales faces and indeed uh, how little money he found himself uh, having access to. So it doesn't surprise me how important this legislation indeed is to the Treasurer. Uh, it's absolutely important. What I'm disappointed about is why the Minister for Planning thought that this would be um, the sort of legislation that needed to be passed in this place as, uh, and essentially assist the Treasurer in taxing the mums and dads and young families of New South Wales. This is a regressive tax that I never thought I would see the Labor Party actually put forward. And when you think about the members of Parliament that have spoken in the other house and the member for Riverston and the member for Heathcote and a number of these new Labor MPs have got up and backed this legislation, they're essentially sending a very clear message to their constituents that they're happy for for this regressive tax to be put forward uh, and they're happy for their mums and dads and young families and constituents to ultimately pay uh, this tax and ultimately they will as I've said in, on the outset that we know um, that developers will have to pass on um, these costs. So if I can just go into what is being proposed, it's disingenuously described as a broad-based housing and productivity contribution, and so far we've heard the Minister, and indeed uh, uh, the Minister of Finance as well, has assisted in, in making claim that this is all about increasing housing. 
it's hard to understand what, how this bill will actually assist in uh, increasing housing supply in New South Wales. I took a great interest in reading the transcript of the inquiry. Uh, I'm not on, on that particular committee, but I, I note uh, uh, the views of members on that committee and indeed the many submissions that were put forward, 22 submissions, and, I, and it was very interesting to read the different local councils and indeed the different stakeholders have their view on this bill. And it seems to me that we're very prematurely passing this legislation. It appears that the government has the numbers already and they're happy just to press on this week, despite the fact that if you read the report and you read the transcript and indeed the submissions, there's still so much detail that isn't forthcoming, including the transport charges, including the biodiversity conservation charges that are unclear. It's very clear from the stakeholders that they've made that uh, point um, throughout the inquiry that indeed, uh, a truncated inquiry I might add, that they uh, made that point that those charges, uh, uh, the government has not been forthcoming on what precisely those charges will be. All of this adds costs. And if you read the submission from the UDIA, Steve Mann's submission, and indeed his comments in the transcript, these add almost up to $100,000 to, um, to each dwelling when you add these particular charges proposed by this bill and you add other government charges and indeed the DSP water charges that have yet to be determined um, by this government. Uh, that will be anywhere from 30 to 46,000, depending on the regions. So these are real concerns that the, de um, the industry uh, within the, de the development industry and indeed their stakeholders have, because ultimately they have to make sure these projects are feasible. They have to make sure um, that they can uh, put the numbers together and present a, a clear case to their banks and to the financiers to make sure that these projects can actually um, uh, well, one, be supported, but indeed be financed to completion so that ultimately you're actually ensuring that mums and dads and young families out there can purchase these homes. So as the Minister in this House and indeed uh, the Minister of Planning uh, made clear, there's 314,000 new homes that are required to be built over the next five years. That's 63,000 each year. At the moment, the trend is somewhere between 36,000 to 42,000. And we're also aware that we're there's a housing uh, development stalling at the moment. That, well, we know that current units that are already um, are expected to be built are stalled, and they're stalled at the moment because there's a cash problem. There's a, a interest rate problem. We have high inflation. We're heading into some a very real economic distress, and uh, we're already seeing developers pull back from uh, already uh, developments that they have full consent to proceed with, but they're concerned that they may not be able to finance. In this kind of climate where you have that 18,000 units are already stalled, to actually suggest that this um, fund is necessary or indeed that this in any way would help or assist the development industry is outrageous. It is a regressive tax and, I, and it's also a tax that's taking away, siphoning away from communities of need within the Sydney, greater Sydney region and, in, and spending it elsewhere. There are no provisions in place in this bill that stop a, a development that might happen in Picton or in Penrith or indeed in Villawood from any of those charges that are taken from those particular developments for those funds to end up being a bypass in Lancove or in Mossman. Uh, and, and that is the concern that One Nation has in particular. We don't want to see our constituents and indeed uh, the people doing it tough in South West and Western Sydney, who ordinarily should be uh, represented by the Labor Party. I can see they're not anymore because it's been the Labor Party MPs that have jumped up um, to boast about this new fund. They're excited um, to have a tax put out onto houses. And it's a, it's a sad testament that this is the sort of legislation that's being proposed by a Labor government during very tough, um, distressing times. But it's not a surprise. It shouldn't be a surprise because it was always going to be this way. Um, it's not a surprise to me that they intend to push as quickly as they can to get this regressive tax through. So one of the amendments that I will propose, of course, is that, uh, that the way the fund is spent, it should be within the LGAs or substantially within the, within the uh, LGA in question. If developments out in Villawood, for example, in the city of Fairfield, and I'm sure the mayor of Fairfield will agree with me, if, they, if they're paying the charges, well, you would expect that the regional infrastructure that ends up being determined would actually benefit those communities in need. Uh, 
I, I note the administration of the way this fund will proceed, and I have uh, some caution and some concern in relation to that. The Minister for Planning has made it clear that he only has um, uh, power over the biodiversity conservation projects that will go forward. He has it does not have the final say in relation to any of this infrastructure spend. Uh, ultimately, we determined by the Treasurer on, on the back of advice or recommendations that he might hear from the Minister for Planning or indeed from local government. But I have to say to local government, they should be particularly concerned about that because it's not, there is no intergovernmental agreement between local government New South Wales and this government to date, despite promising to have an intergovernmental agreement back in March of this year, they have failed to date to ensure there is, uh, that there is an agreement and it's not embedded in any legislation. And despite the fact that Scott Phillips suggested that it should be, the local government, New South Wales, during, uh, sorry, during that uh, inquiry, there was a suggestion that that intergovernmental agreement should be embedded in legislation. Well, it's not, and it's not going to be, which ultimately means for local government, all the local councils across those four regions, that's the Hunter, Central Coast, uh, and indeed uh, Illawarra and, of course, Greater Sydney region, should be very alarmed and very concerned that they will have no say in how this fund will be divvied up in the next coming years. And potentially, as uh, it's already been uh, earmarked by the Minister of Planning, it's $700 million a year. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money that they uh, expect will be um, collected from this, from imposing this tax onto developers and ultimately onto mum and dads who are desperately trying to get into the market. I, I also raise the concern, uh, if I may, um, that um, uh, again, the cost of those charges coupled with the uncertainty um, that prevails around what the DSP water charges will be, and indeed the uncertainty that we know will um, be around the transport charges and the biodiversity conservation charges themselves are a huge concern. It's very clear from the stakeholders as they presented their cases before the inquiry, including the UDIA and Urban Task Force, and I note Tom Forrest, an old Labor luminary um, in charge of Urban Task Force these days, uh, he has sent a very strong message to the Labor government saying that this bill will not result in increasing the supply. It will not assist in any way or form the 314,000 homes that this state is required to provide or should provide in, in accordance with the Productivity Commission's review in the next five years. And it's sad to see that this government's not prepared to listen to that advice. It's sad to see that they're rushing through uh, with this bill as quickly as they can, as soon as they've got the numbers, and I'm assuming they already must have the numbers. Um, that's why we're dealing with this today. Uh, the report was only tabled yesterday at 4 p.m. I've been watching with interest when that report will be tabled, and the recommendation simply says uh, that we'll wait for the LC debate. Um, and that's why I've proposed uh, a couple of other amendments, uh, and we'll see whether the government takes note of these amendments. The other amendment, apart from the fact that they should care about those LGAs, particularly in South West and Western Sydney, in Greater Sydney region, making sure they get their fair share of funds, really simple amendment that they should support. Uh, the other uh, issue I think uh, pertail, well, certainly around the occupation certificate and the construction certificate issue. And we note there were a number of stakeholders that raised concerns in relation to when um, those charges should come into effect. There's a little bit of, it's important to understand the local government contribution, and in fairness to this government, they won't be impacted by this. So 7.11 and 12 won't be impacted by this bill. Uh, local governments have some um, discrepancy. Uh, and can, can pick and choose when those development uh, contributions are made. There has, it, the, the scheme's not perfect, but ultimately local government has collected a lot of money. There's about $3.2 billion of unspent money collected by local government, and I'm sure the Treasurer's already got his eye on that as well, and that's probably why he's decided to get his fingers into this pie too with this new bill. And, uh, and, and that's what this ultimately is, how everybody wants to get their fingers into the pie. They've all figured out that there's a way of getting money from these developers, but the problem is it ultimately ends up being a tax on the very people that we want to assist to get into housing. And that's my uh, concern and the concern of One Nation. Uh, that's, uh, so we'll be certainly proposing that when those charges are uh, collected, it should be at a different stage. 
And it's important because the message that we've got from some of these stakeholders is that it is an issue about financing these projects. It's not the developers that are going to say no to these projects going ahead. It's the banks and the financiers that are going to say no, particularly in the current climate where uh, these interest rates and the potential interests of 15 per cent are being outlaid uh, and the costs are escalating for these developers. And if they have to wait three years to end up getting a return, then you can bet your bottom dollar that some of these developers will go bankrupt in the process. That won't help us actually achieve a better housing supply. It won't help us ensure that people and young families, for in particular, end up buying a home. Uh, that's a big concern, and I would have thought that that would have been addressed properly uh, by, um, uh, by this government. The other issue is, is you've got a special infrastructure contribution fund that's still on foot. Now, I know there was an amendment moved successfully in the other house uh, that that be grandfathered, understandably so, uh, and there's a tr tr transition process being suggested of, I think, 21 months. The message very clear from the inquiry, from many of the stakeholders that uh, are, are very close to, uh, particularly under, have a very strong understanding of how housing and how development works, is that that's not a very, uh, uh, it, it still puts a lot of pressure onto the industry. And my view is that this tax, and that's what it is, it's a tax, there should be at least a three year delay um, to allow for all proper transitions to take place and to also allow a climate where you can actually encourage developers to come forward with their proposals that might be already ready to go, but also encourage the developments that are stalling to be finalised. Because in the end, what you're doing is you're saying to the industry that within three months you're going to start proposing this tax and you're going to start collecting this tax within three months. And um, you don't seem to be cognisant of the fact that it's not actually going to increase supply. So this is, these are the pivotal amendments that I'm suggesting. I actually think there's a lot more other problems within this bill, and I'm not confident that the way these projects will be administered and how the Treasurer has the final say on where, these, uh, where the money will be uh, channelled, that does concern me greatly. And it's not just my concern. You only have to read some of the local uh, government or council submissions, be it a ride, Canberra Bankstown, be it uh, uh, City of Sydney, there was a whole host and plethora of councils that made a submission to this inquiry raising concerns about where the funding will end up. Uh, George's River Council is another one, very close to the Premier's home. In fact, I think it might be the Premier resides within that George's River Council. They've also raised concerns about how uh, this project or how the funding will end up being siphoned away from their communities of need and end up being spent elsewhere. Another issue I want to raise is biodiversity conservation projects. There's no guarantee about where they will be, um, uh, where the money will be spent in relation to those projects. And, and often those projects will be uh, entangled with Commonwealth projects as well. And it's really amazing that you'll end up having a situation where this, these projects could eventuate another state. Okay, And my concern for that is when you're living in Penrith, when you're living in Picton, when you're living in Camden and Leppington, that's a real hard sell for most of these people. And it's also a hard sell to suggest to these uh, families who are doing it tough trying to buy their first home um, that they have to endure a charge that will ultimately be a greater percentage on the, on the burden on their homes than it would be in a, in a wealthier area like Lane Cove or, or St Leonard's and, and other areas that are going to be paying the exact same charge, which is why this is a regressive tax. And you would never have thought that it'd be a Labor government that would propose such a regressive tax, but they have. And, and I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed. Uh, I'm not surprised, of course, but I'm certainly disappointed with some of my former colleagues that they've taken this path. Uh, so, Mr President, I think I've explained some of my concerns and I've certainly reiterated the concerns of some of these stakeholders. Uh, I will uh, endeavour to put further um, issues forward in, in, when we go into Committee of Whole. But ultimately, this is a, a tax. It should not proceed. The bill as it is today should not proceed. If you genuinely, and I say this to the government, if you genuinely want to increase supply, it, there'll be moments in your time of government over the next four years where you'll have, you can look back and you'll think, what was the legislation that actually set this state backwards? Well, I can tell you this is one of them. This is one of those moments where you are passing a bill that will ultimately, you can pinpoint in about four or five years' time when you haven't met 
those debt you know, the requirements of having 314,000 homes, when you haven't met you know, the expectations from the Productivity Commission review and, 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 and when you haven't met the expectations indeed of the very constituents that you're meant to be representing, well, you can, you can turn back and come back to this bill because this will be the reason why it, you won't be able to um, provide the supply of housing that this state desperately needs. It, this bill should not be proceeded with and certainly not in the way that it currently, in the current form, Mr President, thank you. Thank you. The Honourable